Welcome to our Maundy Thursday service. This is quite an event for me because in just over two months time I would have been a fully accredited local preacher for 53 years. Don't worry, I was 20 when I was actually uh, appointed. And this is the first time ever I've done a Maundy Thursday service. Normally we would go to our local church for communion or if we're on holiday, we would seek out the nearest Methodist church, which was having a communion service. But it's not possible this year. And so tonight, I'd like to concentrate our thoughts on the washing of the feet. We begin our service, not with a call to worship, but with a short prayer, which is the collect for today, Maundy Thursday. Gracious God, your son Jesus Christ girded himself with a towel and washed the feet of his disciples. Give us the will to be the servants of others as he was the servant of all, who gave up his life and died for us, yet lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I have found a few hymns which relate to the feet washing, and the first one is hymn 499, and we will sing verses 1, 3 and 4. Great God, your love has called us here. Let us pray. A prayer of confession. We recall that Jesus washed his disciples' feet to set us an example. We find it hard to serve others. We forget our Lord and lord it over others, letting them serve us. We ignore our teacher and choose our own examples, suiting ourselves. We turn good news into counsels of despair. Restore us in the image of your Son. Recall to us the spirit that was in Christ. 
Remove from us all selfishness and desire to control others. And let Christ rule in us. Let Christ make us clean. Let Christ, the servant of all, forgive us and make us parables of his love. For his name's sake. Amen. And in our prayer of thanksgiving, the bidding is, Lord, who kneels and washes our feet, please respond with, teach us to love and serve. Lord, who kneels and washes our feet, teach us to love and serve. Creator God, we thank and praise you because, you because you do not hold back from loving us. You took the risk of conceiving humankind and in your generosity gave us all that we need, asking only of us only that we love you and one another. Lord God, who kneels and washes our feet, teach us to love and serve. Saviour God, we thank and praise you because you do not hold back from loving us. You took the risk of sharing our human life and in your generosity gave that life for us, asking only of us that we love you and love one another. Lord, who kneels and washes our feet, teach us to love and serve. Spirit of God, we thank and praise you because you do not hold back from loving us. You take the risk of going unnoticed as you live and move in our lives and our world, asking of us only that we open ourselves to your power. Lord, who kneels and washes our feet, teach us to love and serve. Amen. A Passover meal for 13. How come it's always me that gets to lay the table and never the boys? A Passover meal for 13, Mum says, in our upstairs room. Ten courses, best dishes, two jars of wine, and they might need a waitress. Job for you, Naomi, Mum says. Maybe a bit of pocket money in it. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Me? I'd rather be out playing with my friends, but what choice do I get? So here I am, setting the table for 13. Best cloths, Passover dishes, best cutlery, the works. I wheedled it out of Mum that the meal is for Jesus and his friends, but I've got to keep it a secret. They don't want their enemies to burst in and disturb them. Mum's a bit scared about there being trouble. Jesus has been known to libel up a few parties, the water and the wine mystery, and the perfume in the parlour scandal, to name but two. But I'm sure Mum needn't worry. Jesus is our friend. I'm sure he wouldn't cause trouble for her. But all the same, I'm going to keep my eyes and ears open tonight. I might have a few stories later to share with my friends. Jesus washes his disciples' feet. It is now the day before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. He had always loved those in the world who were his own, and he loved them to the end. Jesus and his disciples were at supper. The devil had already brought into the heart of Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, the thought of betraying Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had given him complete power. He knew that he had come from God and was going to God. So he rose from the table, 
took off his outer garment and tied a towel around his waist. Then he poured some water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel round his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Are you going to wash my feet, Lord? Jesus answered him, You do not understand now what I am doing, but you will understand later. Peter declared, Never at any time will you wash my feet. If I do not wash your feet, Jesus answered, you will no longer be my disciple. Simon Peter answered, Lord, do not wash only my feet then, wash my hand, hands and head too. Jesus said, anyone who has had a bath is completely clean and does not have to wash himself except for his feet. All of you are clean all except one. Jesus already knew he, who was going to betray him. That is why he said, all of you except one are clean. After Jesus had finished, had washed their feet, he put his outer garment back on and returned to his place at the table. Do you understand what I have just done to you? He asked. You call me teacher and Lord, and it is right that you do so, because that is what I am. I, your Lord and teacher, have just washed your feet. You, then, should wash one another's feet. I have set an example for you, so that you will do just what I have done for you. I am telling you the truth. No slave is greater than his master, and no messenger is greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know this truth, how happy you will be if you put it into practice. Washing the Disciples' Feet Maundy Thursday, the day before Christ's crucifixion, contains in it so many stories that there are so many themes any preacher could explore. As usual in the story, there are detailed differences amongst the Gospels, which not, should not be surprising as they were written at different times. And in the case of John, whom we've heard tonight, for a different readership, of a church which was increasingly Hellenic Greek rather than Judaic. John, possibly John the son of Zebedee the fisherman, or someone influenced by him, gives the disciples a bad press on Maundy Thursday. Of course Judas betrays Jesus. In this story Simon Peter is so arrogant to demand to be washed all over, but later denies Christ three times. Thomas is baffled and Philip is shown as simple-minded. The disciples seemed more concerned about their own safety with good reason. Why? Why was the gospel written in this way? Well it was written to help and encourage the Christians at the end of the first century, a time of trouble. And this story, which begins Maundy Thursday in John, leads on to the very detailed teaching found in following chapters before the betrayal, where Christ is preparing his disciples for his departure from this world. They're often called the farewell discourses. They were written not only to show Christ's reassurance to his first disciples, but to that early church, and indeed to us. Now John's treatment of the Last Supper differs from the Synoptic Gospels. Mark and Matthew follow him, tell the story of the institution of the Eucharist, or Holy Communion, with the symbolism of bread and wine, as a significance of what God will accomplish 
on the following day when Jesus offers his body and blood. And Luke does the same, but goes further to address matters of dispute amongst the 12 disciples. John's account doesn't show the communion at all, nor does it say anything about the body and blood of Christ. But if you look further back into his gospel, in chapter 6, when preaching in Capernaum, Jesus does talk about his sacrifice. Now, John centres on the foot washing, because this story, like the rest of the farewell discourses, was intended for the disciples and through them to us, the church. You've probably seen many of the medieval paintings of the Last Supper. Of course, they were copying what was going on, mainly in 15th century Italy. And so they're all sat at a table on chairs. Nonsense. In the classical world, the normal position to eat was lying down. The disciples would be on wooden benches with more than one disciple on each. Perhaps there were four for three of them each. And they would be around a round table. And their feet would be sticking out behind them. They would, of course, out of courtesy and out of practicality of the dust in the Mediterranean area have removed their sandals on entering the house. So they were ready there to be washed. Foot washing was a courtesy in that part of the world. It was a courtesy from the host to the guests, but equally of the guests to the host, so they didn't muck up the nice furnishings which may be in the room. Why does it matter that Jesus did the foot washing and nobody else? Some say it's symbolic of the giving of himself in the crucifixion and others that are moral teaching. I believe it is, can be both. Like a lot of the Bible, it depends how we look at it and interpret it. But the main point of this story, which hits home, is that it was done by the lowliest of servants or a young girl like the fictional Naomi in our meditation. It is there as a sign that Christ is humble even to the last and it is also a dramatic reminder to all of us and the church throughout the ages that our response to Christ and the events of the coming days is not only our worship, but in the service, the community of believers must show not only to each other, but to people around them. Perhaps one of the greatest Archbishops of Canterbury of all time, William Temple, wrote words of significance that the church is the only human organisation which exists primarily for those not yet in its membership. We have seen locally and beyond churches of all denominations responding to the crisis of the past 12 months and before through food banks, through handing over our great cathedrals as vaccination centres or more locally in South Chingford as a testing centre for coronavirus. That's what foot washing is all about. I'm going to finish in a good Methodist way by quoting from a verse of a hymn written by Fred Pratt Green, which sum up the dual aspects of the feet washing by Jesus on that first Maundy Thursday. Then let a servant church arise, a caring church that longs to be a partner in Christ's sacrifice and clothed in Christ's humanity. The Methodist Church, or the Wesleyan Methodist Church as it was then, 
to its credit, set up a teacher training college, which my dad, against all the odds coming from an unskilled working class background in the 1930s, attended. And his closest friend was a black man who came from what was then the Gold Coast, today's Ghana. And I think of them both as I've chosen the next hymn which comes from North Ghana, hymn 249, Jeju, Jeju. And now for our prayers of intercession. In the prayer, the bidding is, wash us, Lord, feed us with your love. Will you please say the words, unite us with Christ, give us hope for the world. Wash us, Lord, feed us with your love. Unite us with Christ, give us hope for the world. Let us pray. Lord, your disciples are coming to you. Our feet are dirty from the paths we have trodden. Our hearts are hungry for you. Wash us, Lord. Feed us with your love. Unite us with Christ. Give us hope for the world. Our feet are dirty from the paths of everyday life, from making the wrong compromises when faced with important decisions, from not giving time or energy to those whom we need and love, from running fast to get away from you or dawdling in the hope of being left behind. Our hearts are hungry for you, for the assurance of knowing we are loved, for the belief that there is a purpose in life. We need the peace, the strength, the joy that come from you. Wash us, Lord, Feed us with your love. Unite us with Christ. Give us hope for the world. Our feet are dirty from the paths of suffering. The experience and knowledge of pain clings to us and darkens our lives. Illness, starvation, natural disaster, bereavement, disabilities, war. The stones on life's path cause us to bleed. Our hearts are hungry for you, 
for the bread and wine we share together, symbols of the suffering you share with us. We need the courage, the compassion, the faith that come from you. Wash us, Lord. Feed us with your love. Unite us with Christ. Give us hope for the world. Our feet are dirty from the ways of our world, from standing idly by while injustice and oppression besmirch so many lands, while the wealthy exploit the poor who lie down hungry in the dust to die. Our hearts are hungry for you, for the sacrifice of your love that leads us into your kingdom. We need the wisdom, the justice, the love that come from you. Wash us, Lord. Feed us with your love. Unite us with Christ. Give us hope for the world. In the name of Christ, the living water, the bread of life, the true vine. Amen. Amen. And now we say together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now our hymn is 569. And we're singing verses 1, 3 and 4. An upper room did our Lord prepare. Our closing words today are like our opening words, again a prayer. So let us pray. God of dirty hands and tired feet, taking people as they come, kneeling and healing, touching where others turn away. Forgive us when we want to be too clean. Forgive us when we despise life for the messy business it is. If we are too proud to own up to our own brokenness, if we keep hidden what needs refreshment, how can you care for us? You can care, and this is how. When we are ready to move from distance to involvement, from intent to touch, then you will wash the feet that tire on rocky roads, 
you will care and heal beyond our expectation. Thanks be to God. Amen.